Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets, and bring it on to bite-sized pieces. Today we've got some truly amazing news. First up, Bitcoin payment startup BitPay wants to create a national bank in Georgia. And this is an amazing piece because it just goes to show you that cryptocurrency is really swallowing up everything in its wake. And it's also something that Mike Novogratz said in this CNN interview at the very end, which made me realize exactly what's going on. Also, Michael Saylor had a fireside chat with CZ Binance, the CEO of Binance, and there's something that he said at the very tail end of this, which also made me realize exactly what's happening in the background as far as the things that MicroStrategy strategy knows and that is why they are betting so big the things that he said at the very end totally make me understand why everybody is going in this direction also don't forget that the 12 days of christmas will be going on starting in the next five days we start on the 14th of december and it'll go all the way to the 25th and we've got a lot of great prizes lined up all you have to do is just show up watch the digital asset news videos we'll tell you what to do as far as what to comment and we'll draw winners on a daily basis so can't wait to start that. And if you want to find this page, the dantitascrypto.com forward slash Christmas, I'll have a link in the description below so you can check it out. And also Australian exchange SwiftX is also doing a 12 days of Christmas, kind of like mine, just with some uh, pretty good gifts. And it's going to start on the 14th as well, all the way to 25th, where they're going to give away one free Bitcoin. That is crazy. So if you're looking for this page, just go to the exchange and wallet fees. There'll be a link right underneath SwiftX, and it says 12 days of Christmas. Just click on that. It'll take you right to the page, and you can do exactly what it says, so you can all sign up. Now, just so you know, SwiftX is an Australian-based exchange, also for New Zealanders. But I talked to the head of marketing. They said that anybody can enter throughout the whole entire world if you are a member over at SwiftX or not. So definitely give that a shot because a lot of great prizes. Also to make mention, I want to say thanks to everybody who has signed up for the Digital Asset News Cardano Stake Pool. We passed 4 million in uh, about 48 hours. So not too bad. Now we're not at the saturation point uh, <laughs> yet, but uh, once we get near, I'll let everybody know. Uh, saturation point is 63 million. So we got a ways to go, but uh, this is exactly how we thought it would go. And uh, we're looking forward to big things. All right, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today, it is December 9th, it's 4 p.m. El Paso, Texas time. And uh, we got a little bit of, uh, well, actually not too bad. It actually went up a little bit. So it wasn't like 18.1, I think 17.9 at one point, but now we're at 18.5 and people were predicting like the worst, like, ah, oh, it's gonna go to 14,000, it's gonna go to 15,000. Sure, maybe it will, but uh, when you dollar cost average, you kind of are rooting for those. So now that it's up, I'm like, oh, that sucks, but whatever. Anyhow, Ethereum's up uh, 4.2 at 575, probably hit 600 again, and uh, you know, up and down we go. XRP, watch out, 58 cents up 4.2, great, tether's tether. Uh, Litecoin's 1.8% up, I mean, everything's up, I mean, pretty good, right? Wow, Stellar's up 13%. I just saw something from Guy over at Coin Bureau. He tweeted out that there's another stable coin that's going to be uh, allowed to be on, on the uh, Stellar network. So looks like Stellar's just doing some, some fantastic things. I mean, they have, they have USDC, I think there's another stable coin, this will be the third stable coin on their network. Those guys are doing great stuff. Uh, except for, you know, Jen McKellum selling XRP like it's going out of style. But uh, hey, what are you going to do? And then uh, what else we got? Anything great? Uh, not really. Hey, Filecoin to 22? Wow. Filecoin, watch out. Uh, let's see. So that's what we have for the US dollar. Let's take a look and see if you just would invest it into Bitcoin, how would you have done? Well, not too hot. If you invest in Ethereum, you went up 2.6, XRP 3.4. Anybody good? 3.7 for Chainlink. Wow. Cardano 4.5. Very nice. 12%, yeah, 1.0, 2.6. So yeah, I mean, for today, if you want to invest in something besides Bitcoin, you would you would have made a little bit more, but that is up to you. All right, let's jump into today's stories because there's a lot to go over. First up, when I saw this, I almost fell out of my seat. Bitcoin payment startup BitPay wants to create a national bank in Georgia. And at first I read this, I'm like, Georgia the country? And then I, was, and then I read it further, I'm like, wow, Georgia the state in the United States, wow. So Bitcoin payments company BitPay has filed paperwork with the top US banking regulator to create a national bank and this is what it looks like very boring not too uh exciting or sexy but uh, it is because this is bitpay and they have filed that application to organize a 
national bank for the OCC. And uh, this kind of goes in line with what Brian Brooks said in his interview where he said, yeah, he goes, you know, towards the end of, of, of Trump's term in the next three or four weeks, you're going to see a lot of positive news having to do with cryptocurrency and banks. So he probably knew about this already. It's not like he just filed it and like, oh, this is surprising. No, they've been, they've been in talks for a long time. I, everything is set in motion behind the scenes. We just don't know it. So the proposed bank, bit. Pay National Trust Bank would be headquartered in Alpharetta, Georgia, suburb of the state capital of Atlanta. BitPay's C-Suite is listed as the proposed National Bank's organizers. Co-founder and CEO Stephen Pear, it's a good name, Pear. Co-founder Tony Galepi, CFO Jagruti Solanke, I nailed those names. General Counsel and Chief Compliance Officer Ed Doniger. And so what I read these for a specific reason, and it's because it's all about the team. The people that you put in place will make or break you. Trust me, I know about this because I've been broken many a time in businesses. If you, if you surround yourself with weak players and people that just drag you down, you'll never make it. It doesn't matter how great your product is. And from what I saw for these people, look pretty solid. And this is from actually Doniger. He says, this is the first step of many on our journey to launch a chartered institution. We applaud the OCC leadership in recognizing the need for innovation to facilitate regulation of cryptocurrency participants at a national level. So why is this such a, such a big thing? Why is it so big that cryptocurrency type of entities are becoming banks? Well, it's because banks are getting pushed out and they're going to start to panic and they're going to start to kind of raise the white flag and go, what do we do so we don't get blockbustered? We don't want to be those people at the end of the street going, wow, we used to be, you know, number one. Now, now what the heck happened? We're closed down. This is the problem. And this is actually one of those things Mike Novogratz was talking about in his interview with Julia Chatterley. And he talks about something that he just kind of glanced over. I'm like, eh, whatever, just Mike being Mike. But when he says what he says right here, he talks about banks being forced. I'm like, oh, I get it. It's not that they're being forced by outside entities. It's, it's they're being forced by the market and the players that are in the market, and they're being forced by competition to either improve or die. Uh, and so all of a sudden, the world is going to go from bank accounts to wallets, and people are going to hold their value, their 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 dollars, their Bitcoin, their <laughs> movie tickets on their phones, uh, and you know. The banks are going to have to rush into this space, and you're starting to see it. PayPal was a was a huge uh, event this year, uh, and mark my words, I, I saw there was a big Japanese bank that decided to get, uh, I'm sorry, Spanish bank that decided to get into cryptocurrency uh, just this morning, uh, tr both trading and custodying. And you're going to see every single financial institution forced into this space. Yeah, that's the truth. And just what he said right there, I, again, I didn't really think too much of it, but now that I see what's going on with the, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies trying to become banks, now I see it in a brand new light where I see stuff like this, Standard Chartered, we've been covering this, this is the third day we've covered Standard Chartered. Standard Chartered, they have a vast network of banks in, in the UK and actually globally, and they're, they're pretty darn big as, as far as banking goes. And this kind of comes up to a piece that I just glanced over to, but again, now I get it. Standard Chartered and Northern Trust launch Zodia Cryptocurrency Custodian for Institutional Investors. Again, these guys have to do something or else they'll get blockbuster. So Zodia is designed to enable institutions to invest in the emerging crypto assets that are transforming how financial markets operate. Zodia combines the traditional custody principles and expertise of a bank with the agility of a fintech company to provide an infrastructure that meets the high standards and expectations of institutional investors through a platform that adapts the changing needs of clients in the market. At launch, this was interesting, at launch pending regulatory approval, Zodia will provide custody service for the most traded crypto assets, which are Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. This is fascinating because what PayPal did was they did those four Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. No XRP. But these bankers said, you know what? We're going to include that fifth one. Now, this could be because they are in you know, a whole other side of the world uh, as opposed to the United States. And, and the United States is really dragging its feet as far as regulatory issues. But... Do they know something we don't? Or is it just like, hey, we're not in the U.S. jurisdiction, so we, we don't care. But these banks have to become inter interoperable. So they're gonna, if they're going to use XRP in one bank, they're going to have to use it all the other banks that are, you know, for, as far as institutions getting in. So do they know something that we don't? This is a great question. And this leads me to my next point. 
Michael Saylor from MicroStrategy. He is the CEO and he is the darling right now of the crypto space. Reason, because he put $425 million into Bitcoin in August and he's almost doubled his money and he looks like a genius, which uh, he might be. But this was a fireside chat with CZ Binance and the thing that he said at the end, and, this, and thanks Brian for bringing this to my attention. The thing that he said at the end made a lot of sense because I'm always thinking to myself, why did they do that in the first place? And why are they also trying to get 400 million more into Bitcoin on top of their 425 million? I mean, it's great that they made double their money, but you know that could have just been dumb luck. So what's going on behind the scenes? What does he know that we don't? Well, take a listen. Brilliant. So question from Wilfred Michael. Uh, hi, Michael. Can you tell us if other tech CEOs have contacted you since you started investing in Bitcoin? <laughs> I do hear from a, from a lot of interesting CEOs and high net worth individuals, and and they all want to understand what's going on. It's it's really raised the awareness of Bitcoin quite a bit this by this action, and uh, I, I can't tell you what they're going to do. I'm not allowed to talk about that, but I can tell you that. that I'm just going to stop him right here. If he would have talked to them and they were like, "We're not interested. That's that's stupid," he would have said. Yeah, they just, they just didn't get it. They didn't understand. They're not smart enough or whatever he would have said. But if they were going to get big into Bitcoin, then he can't say it. So it only makes sense, right? Um, that's just how I see it. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And before we close out, I need to go back to Mike again, because again, now it starts to really, I start to really put the pieces together. So when we start to talk about what is going on behind the scenes, all we got to do is just take a look at Mike's face. He's never going to be accused of being a poker player. So listen to this. Socialization of getting good custody, of getting people comfortable that they understood it, that it was safe, happened over the last few years, and now it's arrived. And, you know, we see nothing but more and more accounts trying to get involved. Uh, every single crypto business like mine is working at breakneck speed because just onboarding all the new accounts from high net worth to institutions, to pension funds, to endowments. Uh, cryptocurrencies is becoming an asset, uh, not a, a frontier asset. So not only that, not only does he have all these institutions who are beating out his door to get into crypto and digital assets, the question was asked, well, Mike, are you going to put your money where your mouth is? How much do you have locked up? And listen to the response by the interviewer. She's pretty much speechless. I'm pushing people up to 5% allocations. How much have you got allocated, Mike, out of interest? Are you willing to tell me you know, as a proportion of well, As a proportion of my net worth, my kind of overall crypto exposure is probably 50%. Wow. Yeah. Good to hear, Mike. Yep. Good to hear. Fantastic. I'm going to go buy more crypto. <laughs> That's what I'd be saying after that interview. And to drive home this point even more, this was an article from April 3rd, 2020, and I never forgot this. It was Mike Novogratz, and he pretty much just said, hey, look, if uh, Bitcoin doesn't make it this year, I'm going to hang up my spurs. I thought it was an interesting way to say things, but that's exactly what he said. To quote him, he says, this is the year of Bitcoin. And if it doesn't go up now, by the end of the year, I might just hang up my spurs. And that's what a lot of people were thinking around April because they had just had that huge dip in March, uh, Black Thursday. And it was just an awful time, as you probably have remembered. So what happened between that time frame, but Mike was like, well, I don't know what's going to happen. I might have to hang on my spurs to right now him saying, I'll put 50% of my entire net worth into cryptocurrency or crypto assets. I have so much work and so much onboarding go on. We can barely keep up. What happened in that time frame? Well, places like PayPal, institutions start to really get into the, into the whole fray. The groundwork was laid, and now you can see exactly what's happening. So these guys know what is happening. That's why they put so much. Look at Mike. Look at Raul Powell. He dumped all his gold for Bitcoin. You are in the right place. There is only one thing that really concerns me. In the beginning, we never really knew if Bitcoin was going to go to zero, if it was just going to just fade away, if something was going to uh, devastatingly attack it or or whatnot. And it's uh, not going to happen now. I mean, just like Mike talked about uh, in earlier sessions. But the thing that worries me the most is these institutions that are getting in. There's a lot of smart money and they know how to play the game better than you or me. That's just how it goes. So when I see these things happening, I always tend to think, are they going to start to manipulate the market so the price will drop 
so weak hands will sell. And I gotta sell. I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you. I think yes. I think that's exactly what they're gonna do for a while. It's gonna fluctuate a little bit so they can get their buddies in, and that's pretty much how it is. Remember, to them, this isn't about money so they can live or money so they can pay the rent. This is just a game. This is just a game to uh, to big huge players, and the winner is the one that has the most, and that is gonna be a problem. And you can see this of what is happening uh, with Coinbase and MicroStrategy. Again, not to take it away from them, but they were the ones that brokered that deal to get them the maximum amount of Bitcoin with the least amount of price. And they did it in little micro transactions. And who knows? Who knows what could be going on in the background? But if you can drop the price of Bitcoin and keep it low, I mean, 5%, 10% or, you know, like a little pullback that we saw, um, that's never good. So this is my final warning to everybody. Be strong. You know what you have. Don't let it go. They just want what you have. And if you can do that, maybe dollar cost average, maybe do a little trading on the side. That's fine. But uh, just remember where this is all going. Uh, we're not going to zero anymore. Um, this is a, a true viable product and it's going to be enormous. All right. Thanks for sticking with me for the whole video. I really appreciate it. That was a lot of information, but I think it's a lot of good information. And I think it's just things that we need to constantly remind ourselves of where we're actually at. Also, I uh, just remind you, if you have Cardano, you want to stake it, uh, take, take a look at the DNU stake pool. I'm gonna, there's a link in the description of all my videos now, and it will take you to this web page, the danteachescrypto.com Cardano staking pool. And if you just scroll down to where it says wallets, there's the three wallets that, that you can use. And also we have a how-to video as far as how does DNews compare, how to stake your Cardano, how safe it actually is, and really how it's like vastly, really, in, in my opinion, it's vastly superior to Ethereum 2.0 and the whole staking process that they have going on over there. And I talk about that in the video. So go ahead and check it out if you got time. And again, thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's gonna be two months gonna pop up on your left and right. I'll let YouTube do its magic. And uh, that is it. So uh, thanks and I'll see you on the next one.